<laughs> it worked. And we're back. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Waffle Press TV Hangouts. I am your host, Diego Crespo. With me, as always, is my lovely co-host, Emily Sophia. How are you doing today? I am doing much better now that we are preparing to waffle it up because it has been many a week or month or months since we last got to do this. So I'm very tickled to be here. It's just great. As am I. It's been many moons since before Comic-Con, I believe. Yes. I bring that up because ever since then, there's been some news about some shows that we've been watching. Mm-hmm. And we will continue to watch on this show and discuss, and it's very exciting stuff. So today, we're going to start talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Night of, a really old show, Alias, and Penny Dreadful. And then we'll talk about some shows that we're looking forward to returning this fall. Uh, let's just get right out of the way. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Emily, it's been so long since we've discussed any shows on here. Yes. Uh, I think this is one of the longest shows we've been talking about on this channel. Mm-hmm. And I have an odd attachment to it now. I never would have thought of it, like, way back when it first premiered. And now I care so much about these little characters and their little adventures. And now it's getting super weird because <laughs> Ghost Rider's coming in. And I want to know your thoughts on this. Yes, I am. I am really excited. I have only ever been growing more excited for what the show is bringing ever since it pulled a complete 180 and just transformed in quality and storytelling and cohesion. I've pretty much been par for the course. So when I first heard of this, like there, there's that bit of anxiety in that this is probably the largest major Marvel character that they've gotten to pull into the fold. But at the same time, they've proven their ability to go into the weird and alien and even mythological supernatural. So it stands to reason that this is the kind of guy you can you can bring in. And even from what I've seen in the trailers, the visuals don't look too terrible either because that can always be uh, a point of worry is if the, um, the presentation can actually live up to the hype and it still could you know um it looks very bombastic very exciting and i i have good thoughts and feels i've i've read a couple interviews with members of the cast and everybody's kind of hyping the season as darker and sexier which i mean i already thought it was pretty sexy but whatever <laughs> Give, give me more. <laughs> but yeah, generally positive feelings at this point. And yeah, this, this show has become an anchor of what we do on here. And then just, yeah, there's, there's always that personal attachment. And all of our characters are in really disparate places at this point, especially Daisy, for example. Um, I look forward to her having more than likely run-ins with Ghost Rider. Um, and yeah, I, I could go on for days and days, but what are your thoughts? It's so weird in a good way because yeah. the Marvel Universe is weird and it should remain weird forever. Because uh, for the most part, Marvel as a whole, like even the movies, have really just not tapped into the magic side of things. And even mm-hmm. if it's space magic like Thor, it's like, oh, it's just science we don't understand yet. But Ghost Rider is, you right. know, from hell. So that's like a big leap. <laughs> yep. And that's cool that they're finally, like, just going balls to the walls. Like, I guess there's been rumors of a a Blade series coming around eventually. Mm. I'm I'm sure that's, like, a Netflix thing because Blade is – that's hard R stuff, and that's exciting. Uh, Yeah. And there was a TV show back in the day, but I heard it was, like, ass. So, I don't know. Mm. So, I guess nobody cares. Never even heard of that. Yeah, I mean, that's how good it was. Nobody heard about it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I guess – Wesley Snipes may have been offered a role to return as Blade, and he'd be, like, teaching a a protege who'd be, like, his niece or his daughter. And I don't know, this is also a rumor, totally unfounded, but I guess at one point, um, again, totally just a rumor, uh, Nicolas Cage was offered the role of Ghost Rider or to return as Johnny Blaze in some form. I don't know if it was for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or for the movies in the cinematic universe or Netflix or whatever. 
but that would have been just the weirdest thing because <laughs> you and I spoke before the show. There's yep. Academy Award winner Nick Cage, and then there's the Wicker Man Nicholas Cage. Yes, and it's just whatever <laughs> happens, it's a win-win. You know, <laughs> he has he has quite an enviable range that's for freaking sure <laughs> no but this makes me happy because now he can traverse the path that he was born to play and become the mcu's norman osborne green goblin <laughs> this is still a possibility and that just makes me so happy uh, i'm in yeah i will not fight it <laughs> Because then on the, the human side, the normal guy side, the businessman, he could be Academy Award winner Nick Cage. And then yes. as the Green Goblin, he could be meme Nick Cage and just go crazy, balls <laughs> to the walls, nonsense. Like, this needs to happen. But that's a oh, cool thing. hands down. Yeah. Um, I, I like the new ghostwriter. I can never remember his name. Robbie Reyes. I think it's Robbie Reyes. Uh, he's relatively new, like just a couple mm -hmm. years old. Uh, he's a fun character, and I, I kind of like the, the car update so that way it's not just like a copy and paste ghost rider from like yeah. motorcycle yada yada mm -hmm. um, yeah the special effects do look good from what they've uh, shown in the trailers i mean for tv you know you kind of got to cut them some slack like it was just sure. two seasons ago when uh we had kyle mclaughlin and like this really <laughs> awkward doctor we, we spoke at length about that i think it was so bad and that was so weird because that was oh. such a um, but yeah, I mean, they clearly stepped up their game, and so I'm looking forward to that. Although mm -hmm. I still wish we saw some more of Cthulhu Ward in the season finale. Word. That was still <laughs> so cool. I wish we saw more of that. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this season, and I hope they keep getting weirder with the supernatural stuff. Like, I want them to. I hope they have a Halloween special, and they introduce <sighs> vampires. Like, oh my gosh, I would I, I be see so that into that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I don't know. That I think that's weird. really cool. And that opens a whole lot of possibilities. So fingers crossed, I guess, on that front. Yeah. And it seems it seems timely, you know, as we're getting ready for Doctor Strange, for example. It's the oh, yes. reason that now's the time to crank up the weird factor. I'm not sure two or ten, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All good things. All good things indeed. Uh, another good thing is that you have been watching the night of is that correct? Yes, yes, indeed. I actually finished that season. I'm pretty sure it's a one-off miniseries, potentially anthology kind of deal. I haven't heard anything about whether or not they're going to do a second season or series, but I did watch The Night Of, yeah. What did you think of it? Because I haven't seen anything. I've seen pictures <laughs> of Riz Ahmed, I believe his name uh -huh. is. Yeah, uh, from awesome Nightcrawler. Yes, yes, that's where I first saw him too. He's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the upcoming Star Wars Rogue One. So. Yeah, oh think... yes, I completely forgot he was going to be in that. Thank you for reminding me. My pleasure. But yeah, so the the night of, I forget how that first slipped onto my radar. I believe it's an adaptation of what was originally a BBC series called Criminal Justice or something just super ridiculously generic like that. Um, but originally this show was developed, I believe three or four years ago. And um, James Gandolfini was supposed to be uh, one of the leads in the show and he's actually still listed as an executive producer. Um, even though it never got to come to life while he was still with us. But as it turns out, uh, John Tichuro, I always feel like I'm mispronouncing that, but <laughs> you know the guy. Um, he, he ended up taking over, over that role. But basically, basically, the night of, it is seven or eight episodes, so it runs pretty quickly. And it tells the story of... Uh, Riz Ahmed's character, Nas, who is this Pakistani-American Muslim college kid who finds himself in over his head, takes his dad's taxi cab without permission to go to a party. People think that he's an actual functioning cab, and that is definitely not the case. He panics, and then a beautiful woman sets foot inside. The two get to talking, they bond, they have a great night and make love, and the next day she is found dead. 
and Nas finds himself in a very sticky situation and is pretty handily incarcerated. Um, and it's that point that we get a whole cast of interesting characters who come into the mix as he gets pretty much chewed up and spat out by the criminal justice system. But um, John Turturro plays the very interesting part of this uh, public defender type, super sleazy, unkept guy who has really bad eczema. <laughs> so that's a, that's actually a very controversial part of the show because I know that there are a lot of a lot of people wondering why the writers decided to go that route and portray his character that way. But it's I think that it is the perfect role for this actor. He has played such a strange cast of characters in the past, and uh, Jack Stone, his character, is is truly fabulous. And and I really enjoyed the element that came into play with him. But he decided of his own goodwill to take up the case of Nas, um, at least at least for a time. A lot of other complications ensue. Um, but it's a really it's really fascinating crime drama in that there's arguably more subtlety to it than than the classic crime procedurals out there. I'm not gonna say that it doesn't dip into any of the cliches, but it never it never visits them without deconstructing something a little bit or putting a twist on it or subverting some kind of expectation. And in fact, the the final episode, it ends not with a bang, but with a whimper of sorts. That's not to say that it's bad, but it, it definitely throws you for a loop in that you think that there's going to be some huge, crazy, cataclysmic showdown in the courtroom, but things end up taking a very different turn. And it's not so much about the who done it aspect and trying to figure out, um, you know, if not Nas, then who. Uh, it's it's more about dealing with the the unknowing, the inability to truly know and all the people that are forced to make up these narratives to fit their own agenda or who genuinely believe these things. But um, there's there's a lot of humanity, a lot of heart. And uh, I, I think it was a story very well told, um, visually too, in fact. There's a lot that's unspoken and that you have to just witness and observe. and. And that's kind of why I personally really loved the finale, uh, the finale, because there is so much to take in, in the cinematography, in the way things are framed. I think it was really well edited as well. Um, so things that weren't told in an exposition way were kind of shown more or less. And I think that was really powerful. So it's definitely worth your time if you're looking for a little something, something up in the vein of say serial the really uh popular podcast at least in its first season and um it, it kind of filled maybe a little true detective hole for me if if i'm being real with you um but yeah it's it's quite enjoyable there's also a few uh alumni from the wire as well which much to my embarrassment i have not finish that show and it is definitely my plan to do so before I die or <laughs> whenever but anyway I think the night of is a really worthwhile experience and John Turturro is one of my favorite actors so um that's probably my my favorite part of things but yeah just the and the way that it, it deals with uh with racial politics I think was was handled pretty well there are a couple of uh there, there is a female character that I personally feel was mishandled, and I think a lot of other people are of the same mind frame. So if you do watch, just kind of brace yourself for that and be prepared to analyze things a little bit. But I, by and large, I think it's a really great show. And yeah, that's all I got to say about that in this. So there you have it. Well, I will definitely check it out at some point yes <laughs> i know <laughs> i was looking forward to it and then i just never watched it i, I missed the whole train uh, i am watching vice principles though is that still That's good funny. 
yes, I'm. I need to watch the last two episodes, but yes, that I think that show finds a nice little rhythm. I wasn't planning on talking about it too much. I'll hold off until I'm done. Oh, that's fine. But yeah, watch watch Vice Principles and watch The Night of. Those are HBO's. HBO's got good stuff. There you go. I'm really looking forward to Westworld. That's not coming out this year, but I'm oh, looking forward to it a lot. It's it's not out this year. Why did I think? It Wait, was? am I mistaken? Is it coming out this year? It's coming out on oh October first. I thought. <laughs> What? Okay, well, okay, it's coming on October 1st, and I can't wait, because I'm a big fan of Michael Crichton, his original movie. So, yes. Oh my gosh, this is the best news ever. <laughs> I was like, so wait a touch. second. Oh my Westworld god. Westworld premiere. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> look it up just to make sure. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Okay, um, just to, to <laughs> hold space then. Um, yes, I will definitely be watching The Night Of. And I will be talking about Alias a little bit because I am making my way through that show. I'm trying to finish it before it goes off Netflix at the end of the month. Oh, uh, no. I might have to borrow the DVDs or Blu-rays from someone. Or I might just buy it. I really like the show. A little bit on this uh, until you find the Westworld date. Um, Alias is a fantastic show that took me six months to watch six episodes when I first started watching. For no reason other than my own laziness and... <laughs> inability to manage time i am much better at both those things now uh and now i just feel like i i physically don't have enough time to watch it all uh but the every season feels like a soft reboot of the series uh character mm -hmm. motivations at least for the first two seasons i think there's some issues in a uh, plot overtaking characters in the latter half of the series um well the first two seasons uh the show is driven specifically by character choice there's a lot of plot twists but they're all driven by specific character wants needs and uh specific power plays and there are these just really great villains i mean i, I love love these villains in the show because uh specifically the main villain who i won't really name because it's kind of a nice surprise if you kind of go in blind to the show but i love the villain because they have this relationship to the rest of the cast where they genuinely care about at least half of them. Like they view them as family and they would do anything for them. But at the same time, they, they, they're bad. They're very bad people. <laughs> but uh, for the protagonist, they just they have this relationship where they view them as family and children. And it's just, it's so fascinating and, and so different because the protagonists want to end them by any means possible and then they're like oh no just hug me like let's go out have dinner let's <laughs> hang out sometime you know let's just let's be buddies you're, you're like you know what are you doing for christmas come on over <laughs> it's just like they've done these horrible horrible awful things to them in their lives but <laughs> it, it's so weird um and it, oh, uh it's a thriller spy show and so some of the the fetch quest episodes can get a little samey once in a while, especially in season three. Uh, I was told to brace myself. I heard the quality dips majorly. It, it, I didn't think it did mm. too much, but uh, season two, just hands down, is one of the best seasons of television I've ever seen. Uh, every episode had me double guessing, triple guessing, every character motivation uh, in a good way because this was like, again, that's when it was really driven by character. And then the show reboots itself like, three times within a season, but it's it's scary and I feared for everyone's lives because I really liked these characters. And it's just, oh my gosh, the way, it, it's a J.J. Abrams show for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. And J.J. Abrams, when he's not focusing too much on plot mechanics, he's focusing on getting everyone from point A to point B to point C, like nonstop. His, his stories and actions really propulsive. That show moves, man. For the first two seasons, a Alias moves like unlike any show I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, and then season three and four, they're good still. So. Especially season four, uh, which I'll get into in a quick second before I wrap up. Um, but season two specifically moves, like if you've seen any J.J. Abrams movie, and well, then, then you know what I'm talking about. Specifically like Star Trek 09 or The Force Awakens. Yeah. They, those movies just fly by. And Alias feels like that. J.J. Uh, Abrams directed three episodes, and you can just tell right away because he's just so good. Um, and this show stunt casts like nobody's business. There's a diehard two-parter episode 
which I was unaware of when I watched the show. Like it's it's their diehard episode. They, someone takes oh, over wow. the building where all the characters work, and then the the main protagonist, Sydney Bristow, played by uh, Jennifer Gardner, has to work and maneuver around the terrorists in the building, and it was just great. But the best thing about it is that the Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman stand-in is played by Quentin Tarantino. Oh my god! It was the <laughs> greatest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know that that took place. I never seen the I show. But... It's just oh my god! It's the best, and it's mostly wow. a standalone episode. Ethan, you end up watching it. Watch that episode because it's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, last thoughts, I guess, just really quick. Watch Alias. Uh, season four gets really good again. Season three is good, but not as good as the others. Drew Goddard wrote several episodes in season four, and they're just. I immediately knew. I don't, I don't know if, if anyone watches me on Twitter, but there was an episode where I was like, this kind of feels like something Drew Goddard would write. And it, it was. It was Drew Goddard. And it was so weird and so great. <laughs> Watch Alias. I love this show. And that's all I got. By the way, Westworld premieres Sunday, October 2nd, 2016. Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> So bring bring that into the mix. Uh, oh, Agent, yes. It'll be Agents of Shield, Last Man on Earth, Luke Cage, and then Westworld. Whew. <laughs> all just in a couple of weeks, my oh, friend. Man. So it's like we didn't have anything to talk about for like two months, and then now it's like now we too have much. everything to <laughs> talk about. No, this is good though. This is good. Uh, yes. I guess we might hold off on Luke Cage, like Daredevil, and Jessica Jones, but we'll have like quick check-ins and then we'll do a full season review yeah see how that goes that would be good all right uh what else is on your docket emily mm. yes so i just finished the first season of penny dreadful which is now on uh netflix in its entirety and oh my god this show is unreal i don't know why it took me so long to watch it because i was um, when they first started doing marketing for this show, uh, before it came out, I was super into Dexter at the time, and I even had a Showtime subscription at that point, so I don't know what it was that made me hold back or forget about its existence, but um, it definitely came back into my radar when it was very abruptly canceled, and the internet cried out in rage and despair, and there were already so many people who were talking about the amazingness of Ava Green, who plays one of the main characters in the show. I would say the main character of the show. She is kind of its core emotional, psychological nucleus. And she kind of brings together all of the characters that we watch in the show. But yeah, so Penny Dreadful season one is, I think that one's another eight episode, kind of a short um, first run, I watched it in about two sittings, <laughs> and it was pretty great because I spent like a Sunday afternoon just locked in my room with the blinds shut. It was this beautiful, like 85 degree day, sunny, and I had my blinds shut, and I was just like, <laughs> I transported myself back in time to late 19th century Victorian England to a land of monsters and mayhem and your favorite gothic novels come to life. So uh, it mostly in the first season draws from the mythology of Dracula and Frankenstein and then brings in a couple of new original characters as well. But there is Dr. Frankenstein, there is Frankenstein's monster. Um, there are characters from the novel Dracula, but not presented in the way that you would expect. And I think some things have been held off for future seasons, but wow, is this show <laughs> mesmerizing. It's, it's scary and brilliant and gut punching. I actually, I cried at the end of the first episode. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, to be fair, I think part of that is because, like, I am, a, I got a real lady boner for Mary Shelley, and Frankenstein is one of my favorite novels. <laughs> oh, okay. And so, 
there was this whole uh, monologue with uh, with the character of Victor Frankenstein and another character, and it was just so lyrical. Um, I, I, I love the writing of that time period and they capture it so perfectly. So basically it's like, you're, you're adapting the, the super gorgeous romantic prose of the era, but in a way where there's still plenty of humor and it feels natural and it moves and it makes sense. But it's like all these books that I have poured my heart and soul into in the past, I feel like their spirit has come to life in this show. And Ava Green's character definitely takes the cake. She actually gets two episodes that are largely dedicated to her character. And I'm inclined to say that she is probably one of the best television actresses that I have ever witnessed. And I say that, you know, in the midst of um, those characters or uh, rather performers like Vera Farmiga and Jennifer Carpenter, who just blown me out of the water, Kristen Ritter, so many other amazing ladies, but holy shit. She uh, she goes through some uh, demonic possessions, so she gets to play that side of the spectrum, and it is scary and great and wonderful. Um, and, and clearly the show is, is confident enough in itself and invest, invested enough in her character to pull us out of the normal action and flow of things to really get into what's going on with her. So there's all these different elements that are brought into play. You know, there's Satan wants to birth his race of evil in the world, and then there are vampires, and then there's like freaking undead monsters, and it's just all happening in London and it's great. <laughs> it's hysterical. I highly recommend it. Um, I, I might actually start the second season of it tonight because I just can't help myself. I've heard that that's actually the, the best one and that season three is pretty controversial. But yeah, it's, it's really, really wonderful uh, through and through. I had a fabulous time with it. So I definitely hope you'll check that one out because I would like to hear your thoughts. <laughs> It's on Netflix now, right? It is, yeah. Okay, the whole well, shebang. I'll have to... Okay, I'll add that one after because I, I, Night Of sounds good, but this really sounds like... Oh, oh, like put that jam. put that on top. Night yeah, Of is a place. Especially because around Halloween, I love just digging oh, into genre stuff. Yes, 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 yes. This show will be perfect, though. you got to, got to do it. Okay, okay. We got to do like a Halloween special or something. Or like all October, just talk about horror movies and whatnot. Because I have so many oh, totally well. I want to talk about. Yes, but, I'll yes, probably have okay, finished definitely. the show by then anyway. So if you've watched even the littlest bit of it, we can we can talk about that. <laughs> ah, yes, okay, good, good, good. Um, on that note, uh, let's just do a quick rundown of what we plan to discuss on, yes. I guess, this quote-unquote season of our show. Yes. Um, <laughs> Agents so, of Shield, yes. Uh, Penny Dreadful, also I guess now adding yes. that in there because uh, mm -hmm. that that is over, right? There's no chance it's coming back as far as it we is. Know. It is over. It ended after the third season, same as Hannibal. I don't know if Bastards. it necessarily landed with as much grace, but um, three seasons. So I I definitely plan to get through them all. So all right, Agents of Shield, Penny Dreadful. Um, the Walking Dead, of course, because we had a controversial finale. I mean, is it even controversial? Did anybody like it? It's I mean, does that count yeah, controversial if nobody likes it? Controversy if everyone just hates it. Yeah, I mean, that's not really controversy. It's just like we are of one accord. <laughs> we got the pitch words. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see how they they pick it up after that because that's that one's still. I'm still yeah, mad. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be mad that. until the premiere, and then I'll be excited if they can stick the landing. But I will be mad until October 23rd. <laughs> it's totally fair. It's on them. Um, yeah, okay. Walking Dead, Aiden to Shield, Penny Dreadful, Luke Cage, of course. We're going to do our best to, to work that in. We could do a full season review. We'll update with our thoughts if we're not done within like a week or two. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Did we say the last man on earth already? The last man on earth. There we go. Because that's coming back soon, too. Yes. And, oh, season two is so good. I know. I'm so excited. It was so great. Uh, Owen Westworld, because that is this year. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. So, this, by I, next week, we could, uh, let's see. Today's the 14th. So it'll be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the least, but we got a lot of stuff coming up. Oh, man, I'm so nervous and excited at the same time. How am I going to fit this all in? I don't know, but I'm excited know. too. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> but you will. Yes, I absolutely will. Um, on that note, is there anything else you'd like to bring up before we sign off? Um, I have actually begun to watch BoJack Horseman, so eventually I will probably do a little rundown of that. But yeah, I'm only like a couple of episodes in so far. Um, still in like the more definitely trying to be a comedy part of the show, <laughs> but um, I've I've heard really fantastic things, so that's probably one I'm gonna end up sticking with. But. All things in time, whenever, yeah. whenever it can happen. <laughs> I finished the first season long ago, and I loved yeah. it, and then I just never got back into it, so that's on me. Um, oh, that, it, but, it happens. Yeah, and that one sneaks up on you. That's what I've heard. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows now, but yeah, it sneaks mm -hmm. up on you. Yes. Yeah, but that's, that's about it for me this time around, so yeah. Uh, on that note, uh, Emily, where can the people find you? You can find me on YouTube at M Mighty Sophia. That's E M, the word Mighty, S O F I A. Most recently, I did a full breakdown of Penny Dreadful on there and also a review of Stranger Things. Um, much, much more content to come based on the time that I have and what I'm reviewing, but. Soon, my normal fall schedule will resume, so I'll be doing lots of regular reviews there. And then my public Facebook page and my Twitter and my Twitch profiles are all M Mighty Sophia as well. And there will be lots of content coming to those various places. But yeah, M Mighty Sophia is pretty much my little universe, so you can find me there. All right, and of course, you can find me on the Waffle Press on YouTube. Uh, on Twitter at Dago Waffles, audiences everywhere dot net. Uh, like, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't like it, like and subscribe anyways, because you might find something you do like. Uh, yeah, it's been so long. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for 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 chit chatting, Emily. We have been professionally unprofessional.